friends, this video on mechanical properties of solid part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 6 before going ahead with part 7. Now we will study about elastic moduli. When uh, I was explaining you about the Hooke's law, I told you that stress is equal to a constant into strain. That constant was known as the elastic modulus. So hereafter we will discuss about what basically is elastic moduli. Elastic modulus is the ratio of stress and strain. So this is very much clear from my previous statement, right? What I had told while I was explaining you Hooke's law, I told that stress is equal to a constant of proportionality into strain. And this constant of proportionality is the elastic modulus, right? So from this we can say that the elastic modulus is equal to stress by strain. So we can say that the elastic modulus is the ratio of stress and strain. Elastic modulus is a characteristic value of each material. Characteristic value, what do you mean by this? This means that for a particular material, the elastic modulus will be a specific value. Let us suppose if I talk of gold, gold will have a specific value of elastic modulus. If I talk of rubber, rubber will have a specific value of elastic material, sorry, elastic modulus. So that means the value of elastic modulus is a characteristic of each material. Each material will have its own elastic modulus value. So if we look at this graph, we can see that elastic modulus is stress by strain. That means if you look at this region where Hooke's law is obeyed, if you see that region, you can see that stress by strain is elastic modulus. That is the slope of the straight line would be elastic modulus. Now let us look at the different types of elastic modulus. Now if you see, what I am trying to do is I am trying to relate everything together. If you see, when we talked of stress, we found that there were three types of stress, right? One was longitudinal stress, tangential stress or shearing stress and then the third one was the volumetric stress. Similarly, when we talked of strain, we had three kinds of strain. Longitudinal strain, tangential strain and volumetric strain. Now when we talk of elastic modulus, again we have three types of elastic modulus. The first one is Young's modulus, second one is shear modulus and the third one is bulk modulus. So there are three types of modulus of elasticity. So we will discuss each of them in detail. So let us start with Young's modulus. So the Young's modulus as you can see from the name, it is derived from the name of the scientist Young who derived it or who defined it. So thereafter it is known as Young's modulus of elasticity. So what is Young's modulus? It is basically the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain. I already told you that modulus of elasticity is stress by strain. So when it comes to Young's modulus, it only talks about longitudinal stress and longitudinal strain. So the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain. It is denoted by capital Y. Generally, we denote Young's modulus by capital Y. So, the Young's modulus is equal to the longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. Right? So, what is longitudinal stress? We generally denote longitudinal stress by sigma and we denote longitudinal strain by epsilon. So they are just letters to denote longitudinal stress and longitudinal strain. It is better if you remember this uh, notation so that it will be easier for you when you refer some book for numericals or something. So this is longitudinal stress and this is longitudinal strain. So what is longitudinal stress? It is nothing but force per unit area. So this is force per unit area. What is longitudinal strain? It is the change in length divided by the original length. Right? So we get FL divided by A delta L. So this is your Young's modulus. This is the expression mathematically for Young's modulus. So greater Young's modulus means larger force is required to produce a small change in length. So from this you can say that 
if the young's modulus is more young's modulus is more means force will be more and the change in length would be less that means greater young's modulus would mean that greater force will be required to produce a small change in length so if i say that there is a material with greater young's modulus that means you will have to produce more force to produce even a small change in length unit of young's modulus is newton per meter square or pascal why so because it is longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain we know that strain has no unit because it is the ratio of two quantities so it has no units and longitudinal stress is force per unit area so force per unit area that is unit of force is newton and unit of area is meter square so it is newton per meter square or pascal metals have comparatively greater young's modulus why just now i told you right metals are the materials which are quite tough right so if you want to produce a small change in length in a metal you will have to provide a large amount of force so therefore the young's modulus is more that means in case of metals to produce a small change in length you will have to provide a very high or very huge amount of force so that means the young's modulus of elasticity for metals is more now let us look at certain applications based on young's modulus why do you think is steel preferred over copper in structural designs if you see in what do you mean by structural designs if you see the um, structures which are built here and there i mean the uh, the flyovers the uh, bridges or uh, those kind of constructions which we generally see around us so in kind of those kind of constructions the industrial constructions you see that steel is preferred over copper however both are metals so what is the factor that decides which metal is more suitable for structural designs so this answer is quite dependent on young's modulus so steel is preferred over copper because steel is more elastic than copper what do you mean by more elastic it means that if there is a slight deformation in the length of the steel due to contraction or expansion it can come back to its original dimension but in case of copper it is it, it being less elastic those flexibilities are not there therefore greater force would be required to produce small changes in length so since copper is very less elastic so greater force would be required to produce small change in length therefore we prefer steel over copper because steel is more elastic than copper so if it is more elastic it is convenient in the sense that if there is a slight change a slight deformation in the length it can come back to its original form and as we already told that in case of metals their young's modulus is high that is we need to provide more force to produce a very small change in length so that way is also steel is better now how do we determine the value of young's modulus so experimentally the an expression was derived to determine the value of young's material young's modulus of the material of a wire let us suppose we have a wire it is made up of say some metal or some material so if you want to determine the young's modulus of that particular material how do we determine that so an experiment was an experiment set experimental setup was made to determine young's modulus there was a support from that support two strings are hung on that we have hung two vessels two buckets or vessels or whatever you say on each of them we placed one apple each right so as of now if you see carefully both the strings are of the same length and both the apples are lying on identical vessels at the same height now what we do we increase we have also kept a meter scale on the wire on one of them just to calculate the length or the change in length right so so for now this wire is the reference wire so it is the reference right now what we do we increase the number of apples in the second wire 
So as we increase the number of apples to three, the weight increased. Because of this increase in weight, we found that the string it moved in the downward direction. If you see again, you see that the string, this wire got stretched. It got stretched and it went down. So there was a change in length of this wire. So now you understood why did we keep this uh, meter scale as reference just to measure the change in length. So this will measure the initial length. So the change in length can be measured compared to the original position, right? So this was the change in length. So this was, there was a change in length, say delta L, right? So using this experiment, the value of Young's modulus was determined. Now, what was Young's modulus? Young's modulus as per definition is stress by strain, right? So what is stress? Stress is denoted by sigma, strain is denoted by epsilon. To be precise, it is longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. So now this stre longitudinal stress is force by area and longitudinal strain is change in length by original length. Right? So in this case, the change in length is delta L. Let us suppose that the original length was L. Let us suppose the original length was L. So this will be equal to, now what would be force? The force which is acting here is what? It is nothing but mg which is acting downwards. mg is acting downwards. So here force which, this is the force which is causing this stress and strain. The story of stress and strain here is created only because of this force. When you increase the number of apples, the force which is acting downwards due to acceleration due to gravity it increases. So the force will be mg. What will be the area? Area is nothing but the area of cross section of this wire. However, it is a very thin wire, but still it will have some cross section. So this area would be nothing but pi r square, where r is the radius of this wire. So this would be pi r square. This divided by delta L by L. So we can say it is nothing but mgl divided by pi r square into delta L. So this would be the value of Young's modulus. So this is how we can evaluate the value of Young's modulus of, a, of the material of a thin wire. Now we will go ahead and look at certain problems on the basis of what we studied so far. So let us look at problem number one. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.